Welcome back to Race Report, everybody. That is the Austrian Grand Prix for 2021 done. And it looked very similar to last week's race, but it performed very, very differently and in a good way. That's right, we were back at the Red Bull ring. We didn't leave. We raced there last week for the Styrian Grand Prix and we stayed there for the Austrian Grand Prix. And boy, what a way to end it. It's fantastic. This race was slightly different from the team's point of view because they had softer compounds to work with. Pirelli went one compound softer due to cooler temperatures at the track, and that seemed to have a big difference, actually, which was interesting. We also have to have a quick shout out to the big news that broke over the weekend as well, with Lewis Hamilton signing a new two-year deal with Mercedes. Congratulations to him. and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do in the new era uh, next year. But that's enough of that. Let's get stuck straight into that qualifying for the Austrian Grand Prix. And wow, Red Bull dominated throughout. Not something we usually see, not something we're used to seeing over the past, what, seven or eight years, but Red Bull smashed it. Verstappen smashed it. But he wasn't unchallenged. There was a challenge. It wasn't from Mercedes, it was actually from Norris in his McLaren, and that was fantastic to see. In the end, he was four one hundredths off pole. Is crazy to think about. Brilliantly close, fantastic. In the end, one, two, three was Verstappen, Norris, and Perez. We also saw Russell get into Q3 for the first time with Williams. Brilliant to see. You do have to suspect, though, it was because Alonso could not get into Q3, and that was due to Vettel blocking him on his final run. Vettel did get a three place penalty for that. Alonso said it wrecked his weekend, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But you know how things these things happen, though it was really great to see Russell in Q3. We also saw Snowder starting to get up to speed, starting to get a little bit close to Gasly in qualifying, which is great to see. He's been a bit of a slow starter, but he is still a rookie. And uh, it looks like he's starting to fulfill some of that promise we saw from him. That's brilliant as well. In the race, it was pretty much all action all the time. It was fascinating. Really, really good race. At the start, everyone got away well. There was, however, contact between Giovinazzi and Ocon. I think Ocon got a bit sandwiched. Just like we saw Gasly in last week's race, got a bit sandwiched in the middle of two cars. Couldn't do anything. And in the end, he actually had to just park up on the track, which meant we had a safety car on lap one. That gave us a bit of time to reflect. It looked like Russell and Sainz were the biggest losers, dropping back three or four places each from the start. It wasn't too bad. Safety car was only out for a couple of laps, so we got underway again, racing pretty quick. At this point, Perez was all over Norris at the safety car restart. He wanted that P2 and he wanted it now. But he tried to go around the outside of Norris and just got squeezed out onto the gravel. This dropped Perez down to 10th and severely compromised his race. But to me, it looked like more of a racing incident. And I think the commentary team was saying the same. It was like, it was just a good, good hard racing sort of thing. Stewards didn't see it that way. They awarded Norris with a five second penalty for that action, which was a bit of a shame because he was racing the Mercedes pretty well up until that stage. After the announcement of the penalty though for Norris, we saw the Mercedes start hunting him down as he, he clearly switched his focus from fighting the Mercedes to maybe uh, conserving a bit of tire life, looking after his car a bit more. Uh, and Hamilton got him on lap 20. So Norris dropped down to third and freed up Hamilton to try and chase after Verstappen. But Verstappen had built up a big lead at this point. Verstappen was dominant all race. Like we barely saw him on the TV camera. There was just no action going on around him. There's a few strategies out there as well on the track. We saw some soft compound users out there like Gasly. Uh, they start to pit around lap 15, going onto the harder tires. Big question there was, will they be able to make it to the end? For most races that went that way, it was no, they had to do a two stop race. I think there was only one person that started on the hard tires. And that was Sainz, as we'll see in a bit. He went very deep into this race, pulled off a good strategy there. But I think most other people started on the medium. We saw Gasly's teammate Snowder get two separate five second penalties crossing the pit lane entry white line such a shame for him like he was doing very well he was comparable with gasly except for these penalties that just kept damaging his race it's such a shame it's such a, a rookie mistake to make right this race was lousy with penalties wasn't it 
Uh, I think <laughs> I lost count of how many we got in the end. There's a couple for Perez, one for Norris, one for Stroll, a couple for Snowder. They were everywhere. Norris served his five second penalty uh, when he came in for the stop from medium to hard tyres. That was around lap 31. That's when most people came in who were on the medium tyres came in around then. Bottas came in right behind him, jumped him due to that five second penalty. So Norris dropped down to fourth. And it was the two Mercedes chasing down Verstappen. Spoiler alert, they wouldn't catch him. They wouldn't even get anywhere close to catch him. Perez was still trying to fight up the field as well after he dropped back after that uh, incident with the gravel. He managed to jump Leclerc in the pits, which was great for him. So it created a really good battle at that point in the race between Gasly, Ricardo, Perez and Leclerc all out on track, all within a couple cars widths of each other. Really, really good battle. However, it did lead to another incident. So Leclerc tried to go around the outside of Perez on the same corner that Perez went on the outside of Norris. And the same thing happened. Perez closed the door, Leclerc went onto the gravel, and Perez gets a five second penalty, just like Norris did. Again, I think it's a racing incident. I don't think there was any malice in it. I don't think it should have been a penalty, but I am glad to see that they were consistent with penalties. I mean, it would have been unfair to give Norris that five second penalty and then not give it to Perez when the exact same thing happened. So I think it needs to be fixed for future races, but I'm glad they didn't try and fix it mid-race, creating an unfair advantage. That battle continued for a couple more laps with Leclerc still trying to get Perez. And again, a few laps later, Leclerc ends up in the gravel and another five second for Perez for pushing an opponent off the track, totaling a 10 second penalty now for Perez. He didn't have any more pit stops, so he actually took that penalty at the end of the race. But Leclerc, as you can imagine, was not happy. There's some interesting Mercedes team chat around this point in the race as well. The Mercedes announced Hamilton has damage on his car and told Bottas, hey, do not overtake Hamilton. He's got damage. So Bottas was just in a holding position within one second, so he got DRS because Norris was actually closing on Bottas. So they were going to create a little train behind Hamilton. And, you know, McLaren rightfully got on the, the radio to Norris and was like, hey, go get him. But then a couple of laps later, they reversed it and said, hey, Bottas, you're free to race Hamilton. And then they went a step further another lap later where they actually switched the positions. So I guess by their calculations that they were looking at the data and if they'd held position, I'm guessing they would have seen Norris take both. Hamilton and Bottas. For team orders, Bottas overtook Hamilton. Uh, so then Norris was hunting Hamilton and Bottas could get up the road. And we did eventually see Norris take Hamilton on lap 54. So Norris is up into the podium spot. And uh, Hamilton immediately after that came in for fresh tyres, to be honest. He was complaining a little bit on the radio, but they brought him for a second stop. They had a big enough gap, so they weren't concerned about anybody else behind. Red Bull also did the same with Verstappen. They brought him in for a second stop. He was massively clear of everyone else. There was no real danger of anything happening. They just brought him in, you know, thinking about them tire failures in Baku, maybe. Fresh set of tires, off you go, don't worry about it. They're probably thinking of the fastest lap as well at some point. As we entered the final 10 laps, there was entertaining fights in a few different places actually. We saw uh, a really good battle between Alonso and Russell for the final points position. And we saw a really interesting battle between Ricardo and Leclerc. Leclerc obviously trying to get back after he had those issues with Perez. Ricardo still trying to hang on after his recovery race as well. Alonso eventually won that fight with Russell and uh, he managed to get 10th place. Sorry for Russell, 11th place for him. Such a shame, he'd been running the points most of the afternoon. And an interesting outcome in that Ricardo Leclerc battle, Sainz actually to overtook both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sainz after pitting on lap 49, after being on the hard tyres up until then, obviously on the softs now, faster, younger tyres, comes up, takes Leclerc very easily, that might have been team orders, uh, just to, so he can take Ricardo as well. And he does, he gets it done, so well done to Sainz there on both those moves. There was a little bit of drama on the last lap as well, as Vettel and Raikkonen collided. Seemed like a pretty innocuous thing. They just got their wheels locked together and rode off into the gravel together. It didn't really have much impact on the placements. Both were out of the points. It was that lower down midfield fight. But ultimately, our winner 
and in dominant style was Max Verstappen. Just like last week, he adds a winner's trophy to his cabinet around the Red Bull ring. Bottas came home in second and Norris, another podium for McLaren. And I do have to say, he gets my drive for the day. He's fantastic in qualifying, getting second place. And he was brilliant during the race as well. I mean, I don't think he ever had any chance of really catching Verstappen, but he was in a legit fight with the Mercedes. He was holding them off. He was fighting them. That I never thought I'd see a McLaren fighting Mercedes purely on pace, but that was brilliant to see. And he didn't let the five second penalty get him down either. He probably would have got second if it wasn't for that five second penalty, which is a bit of a shame, but he got third anyway. So congratulations to him. He gets my drive of the day. And now we get a week off before we go to Silverstone, the British Grand Prix, my home Grand Prix. And I'm very excited for it because I will be attending this year. I hope to bring you some footage and photos, whatever I can get my hands on whilst I'm there. The video might come out a little later than usual. Obviously, a lot of traveling to be done that day. But if you're looking forward to that, please do subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that usual YouTube stuff. Oh, that'd be massively appreciated. That'll let you know when the video comes out. I'm very looking forward to that video, I will say. And the race itself and the qualifying and all that. What did you think of the race in Austria today though? What were your thoughts on the penalties being flung around as well? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.